What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, this is TWA Motorsports, and today we are going to, like the title says, replace the headliner in this thing. So, um, you guys have seen me do this before, but we are going to um, get this old headliner out. It needs repaired, it's driving me crazy, it's on the verge of starting to fall. You can see it right here in the corners. It's got a bunch of gouge marks in it. This interior has been cleaned up really well. Uh, still got some stuff to do I want to take at some point, clean under the carpet and whatnot, but I want to get this headliner out. So today we're going to do that. You can see I've already started in the back by taking out the third brake light. So guys, this thing had an aftermarket third brake light in it. I've got a new GM replacement, which I will list below. This is what I like. I like these. I don't like the aftermarket ones. I'm not a fan. Anyway, so you do have to take that out. This is a big step, guys, in replacing this because there is a piece of wiring you can see right here that plugs in that controls not only your brakes your brake lights but also your cargo lights so you need to do that the other thing is you can see that little clip right there we need to push that thing through when we're ready to pull this out so uh yes i do have the screw sitting on top the hood is or the roof is trashed sue me <laughs> anyway guys so Here's what ultimately I think I want to do. Holy cow, I got a bunch of garage door openers here. Um, I'm going to take those off. And I think what we will do is we will start probably in the center here with this guy. Generally, this is a Phillips. These are like T15s or T10s. And then we'll kind of work our way back. But we're going to have to pull the pillars out. And I'll just kind of show you guys the process. My hope is I can get it out down to my upholstery guy and he can recover it. And uh, at the same time we're doing all that, we'll give all these parts a good cleanup and we'll replace all these old halogen bulbs. Look, there's a bunch of bugs in there. We'll get all the bugs out and we'll replace these with new LEDs, which I'll, like I said, guys, I'll list all this stuff like I always do in the description, but let's set you guys up on the tripod and get started. Now, depending on, this has been taken out before. Okay, it's generally a Phillips, but sometimes they trick you Somebody, like these things are notorious for falling down. And um, if they do, people just put whatever they can find up in there. So just a Phillips here in the front. You can hear it make a noise. There it goes. And then once we do that, we'll just pull from the back, kind of back here in the corners. There's just two clips that hold that thing on. And they stayed intact, which is good. Now we need to unplug this guy probably should have grabbed a uh, Phillips or I mean a flathead to do that but this is the piece guys that we added in the green truck and um, it's nice that this one has it I wouldn't I wouldn't about to, I don't know that I'd do that swap again it was just it was a lot of work so now that we got that let's move on to the um, visors here like I said I believe they're a t15 I always pick the wrong one a T15 and a T10, they look almost identical. All right, make note of this too, guys. I don't know if you noticed in the last video when I replaced one of these headliners, I put these in backwards when I put them back in. The opening faces the front of the truck. And you just have to almost just loosen them and then they, they almost fall out. Same situation here. I generally like to do the one up front first. And then I try to keep all this stuff with the parts. Once you get that front one out, to me it makes it easier because these two, you can fold it down and access it. Try to put some pressure up against it so it's not falling out. There we go. Got that out. Now we're going to move on to this light in the center. Now on this center light, you should have an opening to get a flat blade. Like I've got a plastic one here. But once you fold that out, that holds it up against this side. And then you just thread it out towards the passenger side and we are loose. We just have to get it unplugged. We 
can do that. Man, I'm making a mess. There we go. So we'll get that all cleaned up. Now, these guys back here are a little bit different story, but guys, what I'm gonna do next is there is a pull handle up above right here. I'm gonna grab it out. For this, I generally use like a really thin flat blade screwdriver and kind of get underneath and pull those guys out like that. And now a couple things can happen. Um, you can leave this on, okay? So this will pull out of the roof once we get some more stuff loose. You can hear it there. It's loose. We'll pull this off because he'll have to have it out of the way and I'll show you that here in a minute. But the next thing I wanna do is let's go ahead and take the pillars out. I didn't show you guys me taking this side's visor out, but on the pillar, if you get up here in the corner and pull straight back towards you, and then it comes out of the dash, it's got two little pieces. Sometimes they, if they've been there a while, these will stay clipped in the dash, but this one's been out before when I replaced the dash bezel. So now we're loose here all the way across the front after I get this other pillar out and we need to go to the back and uh, I don't want to take it all apart. I think we can sneak it out from behind this back panel back here. So like back here in this corner, uh, but we're going to give that a shot next. The problem with these panels here is I'll try to get my light a little closer here, but the problem with these panels here are that they all your clips are on the inside and so if you go pulling from the outside here you're gonna break generally they crack like right in here so what I like to do is I like to grab a flat blade screwdriver a pretty stiff one and I kind of start it and I've got a towel here just to kind of protect things but then I try to get the screwdriver back as far as I can towards the middle and if you do that a lot of times I may have to grab a thinner screwdriver. But if you do that, you can get back to the clip. You hear that? We just got the clip loose. And so that's all I'm pulling loose because we can now sneak it over the top of that, or at least I think so. So there's only two clips up here that we actually loosened. You can see what I'm talking about there. So I'm gonna do that on the other side, and then I'm gonna move to these guys. For these clips, here's how I like to do them. I've got two smaller flat blade screwdrivers, and this is two piece. If you get on the bottom, on both sides, and pull straight out, that's how they disconnect. But guys, they're generally a fight. And I actually think I'm gonna have to grab a stronger screwdriver, because this one's bending. Holy cow. And the other thing is the longer they've been in here, the more likely they are to give you a fight. There's a spot you can kind of pry up top. I just don't, I don't want to mess them up. Um, I, you know, that's kind of a pet peeve of mine to have these things all jacked up. So I do have another set, but let me go get a couple stronger flathead screwdrivers and see if we can get a little more leverage on that. Got a couple stronger ones here. Let's give it another shot. There's, there it's starting to go. Holy cow, it's, it's in there. There we go. So once you get it started, oh, it's gonna make a liar out of me. I was gonna say it's gonna start coming out, but it's not. We got it started at least. There we go. Now we're loose, you can see we're out of the holder. I don't think I broke anything. It sure looked like some plastic flew off though. Um, so we got that one loose. We're gonna get that other one. And then other than that guys, we need to pinch that little thing that I showed you at the very first of the video to drop the headliner out of the um, third brake light option. Uh, so you need to push that together. It kind of pinches and pushes up in there. A lot of times they're disconnected. Uh, I'm gonna try, but you know, we'll see if it actually is hooked up. This thing should actually be loose. I don't know, however, we're gonna have to unplug the mirror. There we go. 
so I wanted to show you guys this. We may have to take that whole piece out, but you can see how this comes apart. These guys here kind of slide over and you may need help, the help of a screwdriver or something to get them like this. And then they come apart. It's just a cheesy piece of plastic. Once you do that, that is all that retains that handle into the actual headliner itself. I'm gonna have to have some help with the screwdriver on that one. I'm really hoping though, guys, that we can sneak past this, those pillars. But I, I am gonna go ahead and unplug my mirror. Now that we got the mirror unplugged, we're really closing in on what needs to be done here. There's a spot up here, a lot of times it gets stuck in the windshield. So you can see, we need to, oh man, it's gonna be tough to clear these. I thought it'd be a little easier than that. Maybe. Never done it with those in place. We can just get it over the top of it. I don't know guys, we may end up having to take the pillars out. We're either going to have to take the pillars out or the mirror out because I'm all the way forward. And I don't think... I can tell you one thing, going back together, we're definitely going to want those out. I may be able to snake it out, but it's loose and ready to come out. But what we need to do now is there's a, there's a series of wiring. You know, all this wire has to come from somewhere. The mirror, the lights, the third brake light, all that stuff comes down the pillar on the on the driver's side. So we need to get this released and trace that wire all the way down to the box underneath the steering column down here in the kick panel. Uh, so I'll show you guys that next. I'm gonna probably, I think guys, just, just because it's gonna have to happen anyway, we might as well just go ahead and pull this back panel completely out, which means we have to pull the kick panel out it's more than I wanted to do. Now for this back panel, guys, you see me pull this out a couple times. Uh, I start with those, and then there's clips all the way across, so I kind of put my hand there and get those loose. And the only reason we have to take this out is because there are two Phillips, assuming they're there still, uh, back behind this panel that hook um, your pillar piece in. So we're gonna have to do that. Like I said, the other thing we're gonna have to do is pull the trim down along the door seal here um, because that down there so this piece that runs all across to the kick panel that covers this so we're gonna have to take that out so i'll get that done um, off camera here this is the way all my projects start something simple and turns into a bunch of cleaning i can't not clean stuff so took that off Got that piece off across the back, just a bunch of clips. Now you can see the Phillips that I'm talking about. So we'll get those out and then this pillar will just unsnap all the way the rest of the way down. Things get real easy when those are out of the way. But you can also see that we're completely loose. I've got the seats folded up because actually guys, this is the way it has to come out. Um, but we need to get this wiring loose. And so I'm gonna go ahead and grab my clip removing tools. We're gonna get the clips out that go down to here and uh, being careful not to hit the dash. And you know, we've got this really nice dash that we lucked out and found. So we're gonna do that. And then I'm gonna show you guys down here kind of where it goes. Generally on the, and it does, which is awesome because I was worried about that. On the like 99 to 02s, it runs back behind the dash. And so you would have to cut it. On, for some reason in 03, they decided to route it right here. So you could take off your fuse cover and that is the wire that we're tracing down to that box in the kick panel. Some people choose to just break the glue here. Um, I'm just gonna take it to him with that kind of wadded up. Um, the glue's already broke in this section. It's probably been broke for years. But this is all I'm doing here is going down the ledge, pulling these things out. And then, I'm hoping that's it. 
We're going to get the one out of the fuse block here. Actually, I think it's the one behind that. Mmm, just stab my finger. That's fun. All right. There we go. We've got it. That's it right there. You can see me pulling on it. Now let's get under the dash and see where we need to be there. I've honestly never been under the dash of this truck. It's always scary when you see stuff like this. I don't even know what that goes to, but we need to get this box loose. And so you need to take the center piece out, but then besides that, there's a couple clips that kind of are, that hold it on the top and the bottom. We'll get it out of the way here. And our wiring guys is very, very simple. Um, I say that it'll probably make a liar out of me here, but holy cow, this, this presses didn't touch the front bumper. It's got so much thread. All right. Looking at this gives me anxiety how dirty it is, but I'm going to pop this box off. I'm going to need both hands, but you could see our wire coming through here. And so we just need to trace that into this box, which I'll show you once I get it out of the way. So this is the wire here that we undid in the fuse holder. There's another couple clips on it, but you can see it runs all the way down and there's a couple plugs. You can see one there and one in the top right hand corner. We need to unplug both of those. Now you can see we got those two unplugged. Guys, all we need to do is kind of sneak this around and it'll, it's going to take me both hands, but you will be able to push it out of the opening up here, even though it doesn't seem like it, it will come out there. So that's what I'm going to do next kind of roll it up and set it up on top of this or let it fall out the door and then we'll get the headliner out. Now the fun part, we gotta get this thing out of the truck. And so guys, in my experience, the easiest way is to move both the front seats, well, front seats, the only seats, both the seats forward. And then it kind of comes down the back, up in the front, down in the back, I wonder what's holding this. Oh, the wiring in the top. So once we do that, you should just be able to walk it out right out the door. Now, extended cabs, crew cabs, holy cow, are they a different story. Um, I honestly think, guys, you'd be better off taking your seats out, uh, especially in an extended and a crew. But in this, the only issues you generally have, uh, sometimes your windshield glue, they glue this down. And um, yeah, so either way. Got this out, now I'm gonna get it to my upholstery shop, uh, which is nice as my neighbor, but guys, I don't know if you could see that under that seat, but that's melting me down right now. Uh, the OCD in me, I don't, see there, I don't see any way that I can put this back in without taking that stuff out. I don't know. Either way, next clip you guys will see, we'll have the headliner back all covered uh, like I said, guys, it's starting to peel, showing its age. Oh, I did. You can take these off too. Um, this is that piece I was saying you needed to pinch. It's still glued on, which is nice. But these guys, they just kind of pinch together and push out. We'll get those out of his way too. So I'm looking over this, all the dirt and stuff that makes me crazy. And I'm thinking, hey, we've got the headliner off. Why don't we at least coat the roof of this thing with some um, sound deadener, you know? We did it on the green truck, we did the whole truck. And while I'm not planning on doing the whole truck here, um, I thought, man, let's just, let's do it while we wait on the headliner to come in or to get finished. Um, wouldn't hurt to do this. So what I'm doing here, guys, is I'm using some rubbing alcohol, just wiping this down so we get a good surface for stuff to stick to. And uh, I'm gonna go grab some of my kill mat a couple rollers and some ways to cut it and we're going to cover just these areas here so between the bracing hear that right there oh there's screws up there that that's not fair but we're going to clean this other side off and we're going to start with some of that kill mat roll this thing out as far as installing this stuff guys there's not a whole lot you need i will recommend these i'll list these in the description these are the rollers to smooth it out um, they come in a set uh, I use 10 snips, that's why I'm using the trim it. But uh, ultimately, I'm probably gonna overlap a lot 
because it isn't going to hurt anything. You know, I did 50 mil in my uh, green truck up top. And after looking at it, guys, it, it would have definitely taken the 80. So it's not a big deal. So we'll try to get it on here as smooth as we can. The first piece is always easy because you don't have anything to trim around really. These next pieces are a little harder. But uh, when you have a full piece like this too, you can kind of roll it out a little easier. This makes such a big difference in the cabin noise. And like I said, since I had the headliner out, it felt like a good time to do it. There we go. Uh, in the corner, sometimes you need to use a smaller one, like this guy, kind of help flatten it out. The big one won't go up against that so that's the first piece i won't bore you guys with the time lapse that you've seen me do this again but i, I will recommend definitely makes a difference got one side completely done here um you guys can see and like i said i overlapped it in some spots it's not going to cause a problem just make sure that your seams are rolled down really nice i go over those a couple times but I used what? One, two, three, three pieces. That's all it took me to do all of this. Now I had to trim a little section here, but you'll notice that you have some extras and you don't have to get it. You know, I was really concerned on my green truck about making sure it was all straight and all the edges lined up really nice. Uh, at least when I started, I was like that. And then I realized that this stuff can overlap. It smashes down and um, I don't really see the problem there, guys. So that big difference so I'm gonna knock the other side out real quick and then by that point hopefully we'll have our headliner back we are ready to put the headliner back in I just got it back uh, which is really exciting one day turnaround can't beat that I took it it only took him a couple hours actually and uh, I know a lot of guys out there do it themselves I guys look I just don't have time for it I don't have a clean spot like he does to put it and so we're gonna get it in place. I'm gonna kind of let it balance, I guess, on the seats kind of. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna thread the wire up um, into the third brake light. And then I've got a couple of the clips, like the coat hanger clips. That's what I'm gonna try to keep it suspended with, as well as the push-in piece um, that we had to pinch to get out of the third brake light hole. So that's, that's the plan anyway. Uh, we'll see if it goes that way. If we can get it to hang up in there, you know, it'll be fine resting on this for now uh, until I can get maybe um, the holder for the visor in as well. So we'll need our T15. Obviously, we'll need those pieces. I've cleaned those off. And so let's get it done. Attempt to get it in here without like, you know, scraping it up against anything dirty. I mean, the good thing about it, guys, is you can always clean it off, especially since it's new. So, I may have to go to the other side and try to get that threaded in. Lay this here, maybe I can get inside. Like I said, I'm trying to get that wire into the third brake light opening. That's really the biggest deal. Once we do that, then we can try to move it around back and forth to get Maybe a couple of these started. So I got, I got that one started in the back. I may also, well, I was gonna say I may try to put the pillar in, but I think it'd be easier just to try to get the other stuff in first, but I've got that one clip started, so we should be good for now. And like I said, we're gonna try to get the front side into place. A lot of times it's easier. Remember the opening faces the front of the truck, uh, but a lot of times it's easier to start the screw before you get it in there. You can imagine trying to look up and see it. 
I'm gonna go grab my light again too. But... There we go. We're gonna attempt to get it up in here anyway. I got it started. I did. These things can move back and forth. That makes it a little harder. I'm going to go ahead and start to put these back into place also. Yeah, that's not, that's not in where it needs to be. But I'm going to leave it for now. I'm going to go to the other side and put that one, see if I can get it started. And then our handle, of course. But it's looking pretty good. I was able to get the handle in on the other side, um, as well as these guys. Now it's like suspended, and I don't have to worry about it falling down. Um, so I'm trying to think of what I want to do next. I went ahead and ran these wires, tucked them back down behind the dash. I think I'm going to hook those up because that'll give me power to be able to see the LEDs that I want to put in. So I think we'll do that next. Uh, I won't show you guys that. I'm just literally just looping it back in the same way it came unplugged. And uh, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time cleaning on that because I think I'm gonna go over the carpet uh, at some point, maybe even in the next video. So either way, let's, uh, let's get this plugged in so we can work on our lights. I started by cleaning the bugs out of this guy, which is our center light. And guys, this is like that old bus style, like that. And I've got a new LED from LastFit. And a lot of times you'll have to pinch these together. Be careful because these often melt and break. But a lot of times you have to give it a little extra because these don't quite fit as good as the old ones. You want it to be nice and snug like that. And so once I get it in there, I'm going to do it again. We'll make sure that it's going the right way here. Golly, I'm gonna pinch it down with some pliers. It's not going, well. You just don't want it rattling around in there. There we go. All right, so now we're gonna plug it in and see what happens. Hopefully it'll work. Maybe. Oh, I can't get it plugged in. There we go. Now it's not working right now, but I think my light's timed out. We're gonna have to shut the door and open it back up. Bingo. It's working. Golly, it's bright, I can't see a thing. So now we just need to feed it back into its opening. Can't see, any, guys. I can't see anything. It's so bright. There we go. Holy cow! That thing's bright. Woo! That's almost all you need. I can't even imagine once we get the middle ones in here, which is what I'm going to work on next. I'm going to clean those off, and I might install the bulbs out of the truck because we have to pop those little lenses off but i'll show you guys that if i do now for these i've got more of the last fit and guys i will i know i say this a lot but i'll list them down in the description down below i'm using a very very small flat blade screwdriver and the reason i'm doing it this way this could bite me because it may not be the right direction but these like to fall out these little chrome pieces here and so to me, and you almost got to take them out to get the bulb out anyway, but at least you're not trying to fight them falling out on your head while you're taking the bulb out. This one acts like it's broken. And it's almost one of those things you have to have pretty small fingers. I should have had my son or wife come out and take these out. I'm gonna have to go grab a, uh, I need, I said this a lot, but I need a pair of pliers, needle nose pliers with rubber ends on them. 
All right, I'm gonna go grab something to get these lights out. Cause I don't think I can push it out from the back. Well, maybe I can. Nope. All right, new plan. We're just gonna have to go get something to pull them out. I don't wanna snap them off in there. I was able to use a pair of needle nose to get them out, but not my preferred method. I don't know why I didn't think of this before. I don't know how many times I've fought taking these things out. Um, upside down. The downside, guys, is we need to push these back in at the same time we push the bulbs in. So this is kind of how I do it, like that. I don't think the... Oh, we can put them in first. I was going to say, I didn't think before we could get the... Uh... For some reason, I didn't think they fit over the light once they were in, but maybe these are a little smaller. I'm probably making a mistake not putting the, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the lenses on, but I bought a little nicer bulb from last fit for these. And I don't think it matters which direction you put them in. I think they work either way. Kind of got to be a little aggressive with those. All right, clean off my fingerprints. Let's give it a shot here. Let's see if we can get it installed up top and see if it actually works. If it does, I'm going to let it hang here while I go get the screwdriver, uh, put the clips in. and I got something. Okay, there we go. Yeah, they're both working. Man, it's bright. So we'll put the clips in here. And then I'll go grab my Phillips screw. And we'll be done with that part. Holy cow. Guys, this is incredible how much light this makes. Definitely worth it. Now that we got the screw in there, that's nice and snug. I'm gonna go ahead and put these guys back in. Good night. I, it looks like, I feel like I've been staring in the sun. Um, I cleaned these back when I did the dash, so they didn't need to be cleaned. Normally I would clean this stuff, guys, but press them down on the dash, find our opening where this lines up, get it pressed in, just like that. Perfect. I'll get the other one on the other side, and then I want to show you guys Kind of my method of cleaning, you guys are probably wondering why haven't you put the visors in? Well, I need to clean them and they're the hardest part to clean. So I'm gonna go grab those real quick. I'm gonna show you guys kind of how I scrub them down and clean them, but let me get this other pillar in. All right, so for the visors, look, these things get nasty over the years. Your dirty, nasty hands touch them. It's a pretty light color. So I've got some super clean on a microfiber. And you guys can see, hopefully, that spot right there. We're gonna start there. Actually, there's another little one below it. Uh, this stuff's pretty resilient, so you can be pretty aggressive on it. And it seems like they have maybe some scotch guarding on them from the factory. But they're, they're so, it's such a thin material that if you're careful, I mean, don't scrub like super hard, but if you're careful, you know, you'll start to bring up those stains. So I'll go over an area like this the main, I'll go over the whole thing, but the big stains, I'll go over them a couple times. So I may scrub on this and then we'll let it set. I'll change directions with the cloth and it's already faded quite a bit, but we can do better. I think we can get it completely out. Notice that 
I don't know if you guys you guys probably can't see from on camera, but that spot right there came completely out. You can do the same thing on the headliner. The problem with the headliner is most of the time on these trucks it's you know it's letting go at this point. But I like to clean the leading edge because your hands touch that. And ultimately I don't want to put an ugly, nasty visor back up against our clean new headliner. Good time to clean the mirrors too. I generally don't clean my mirrors with super clean, but it's on the rag, so it won't hurt anything. I'm gonna clean all the plastics here where it mounts both sides because there's a bunch of junk, just dirt and dust on the top side. And that's pretty much it. So this, this process takes me I don't know, probably 20 minutes per. I'm gonna keep going over this off camera and then I'll show you guys this one um, once I finish that one main spot that I was trying to get off. Even if I can't, it's on the back side where you can't, well, no, I guess it is on the front side, um, where you can't really see it, but. And then worst case scenario, guys, if you've got an upholstery guy that knows what they're doing, they can recover these as well. So I won't show you any more of this. Let me, uh, let me go over it a few times and then I'll show you the results. Can you guys still see it? Um, it's still there. You can see it right there. And so here's what I'm thinking. Um, I'm not sh really sure what it is. I've never had something that I couldn't necessarily get out, but I've really soaked it down. I've been pretty aggressive on it. I'm going to let it dry out overnight. I'm going to go ahead and put it in um, because I can get to this in the truck. Like I can fold it down. This is, um, this is the front side, the front side that you're going to see. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in the truck. Um, if I can't get it to come out, I may just look for another one. And to be honest with you guys, I'm pretty sure the one, in fact, I know the one in the lawn mowing truck doesn't look like this, so I may rob it. But either way, um, sometimes you can't always get them out. And I really think that it'll fade. Um, when it dries, it'll be a little lighter, and then we'll go over it again, it'll be a little lighter, and I think eventually we'll get it, but it just didn't come quite as clean as I, I had hoped it would. We now have it. Let's check it out here. Be nice if the lights weren't on. I know you're getting a lot of reflection. Now, um, the spots where I got, you know, where it's pushing on it, you want to try to use your the flat part of your hand. These will come out when it gets a little heat. But guys, look, um, I did get the visor back in and it has already started to fade a little bit. So like I said, I think we go over it a couple times and we will be good, but ultimately we took care of that area right here. There was a bunch of little spots in it. Now, as you can see, we do not have the back panels back in. I haven't put the panels down below and uh, I haven't got the third brake light in. So the third brake light, uh, the only reason I'm not putting it in is I'm waiting on another set of bulbs, but guys, this is just a brand new GM uh, third brake light. The bulbs that I had in it uh, or put in it don't seem to be working, so I took it back out. And then I'm gonna put a little touch-up paint here on that corner. You can see where it's um, just kind of worn. The other thing is I may paint correct the top, and I just didn't wanna have to show you guys that again. You've already seen me paint correct the top, the sides, but ultimately we got accomplished what we wanted, which was getting the new headliner in, getting the LED lights in there, and what a huge difference just the LED lights make, guys. Now, obviously the whole thing was for the headliner, but hey, those LED lights are sick. Anyway, uh, we're going to finish. This is where we're going to finish here, guys. In the next video, uh, I'm going to probably start filming a little bit of that now. But in the next video on this truck, you're going to see me yank these seats out. I don't know how in-depth we're going to go with cleaning the carpet. It just depends on what it kind of looks like after we get it vacuumed off. The carpet seems to be in very good shape. So chances are we may just scrub on it a little bit. But I want to get, you guys know how I am, and this will not fly. So either way, like I said, we're going to get that carpet out in the next video. But if you guys did enjoy this video, uh, hit that thumbs up down there. Guys, if you take your own headliner out and take it to an upholstery shop, chances are they're probably going to maybe charge you 100 bucks to recover that. So in my opinion, it's worth it, not the hassle of trying to spray glue and get glue on everything. Not to mention, like I said, I don't have a clean surface that's that big that I can work on. So 
But anyway, guys, like I said, uh, if you're not subscribed, go down there, hit that subscribe button. Of course, while you're down there, ring that bell icon. That notifies you every single time we drop a new video on this or anything else. And stay tuned to see what we work on next.